And we are uh, not much to report coming out of that. We are in the process, of, as you may know, um, Superintendent Smith has decided to uh, retire. So we are uh, talking a little bit preliminary about preliminarily what we're gonna, <laughs> gonna do uh, going forward. Uh, trying to get a plan of action and, and uh, maybe instead of meeting for a couple of weeks, we're going to meet when the whole board is here. We only really have uh, just have a forum tonight at three. So, um, uh, let's move on to agenda item number four. Uh, we have any correspondence? Luke? Yeah, it's all listed on the agenda and it's online. Okay. All right. So, Our, we move on to public comment. Okay. Um, just want to uh, remind everybody. Um, the board welcomes comments on matters of the district interest. The board will listen, to, but cannot, cannot engage in discussion or take action on items list, not listed on the agenda. All public comments will be limited to three minutes, and then you'll get more there. Come down. Um, limit of approximately 45 words uh, in written comment. You may not cede any time to another speaker. We ask that other public observers in the room remain respectful. Do not interrupt. The individual giving public comment because it is a time for the board to listen and it is very difficult to do so when there are other multiple individuals speaking at that time. Board President, I will maintain the order of this meeting and may issue warnings or removal of disruptive individuals. Call to speak. Please state your name and I will let you know when your three minutes begin. Again, remember to be respectful and courteous of all our fellow Cayucans. Thank you. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Ron Wilson. Oh. Three minutes, Ron. Okay. <laughs> 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 I can turn my phone off. I'll give you a 10 seconds. Yeah, one. And go. Uh, <laughs> and that would be just about me. Why not? Right on the top. Uh oh. Is there a mic up there with no battery? I'm yeah. pressing a button underneath the mic. Scott, you want to say something? That's a good start. I got a minute and a half left. left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm responsible for your technical problems. Anyway, uh, I wanted to speak on the issue, and you guys obviously just came out of the meeting on it about the superintendent search. Um, uh, I don't think any of you have done a search yet. I did four of them, so I kind of know what the, the pattern is here. Um, we will be very late in the process. This thing needs to move at lightning speed because, um, just to give you an example, um, here's a posting for a superintendent at Brett Park Union High. Uh, they posted uh, December 27th. Their application deadline closed January 27th. And so they'll be interviewing, they'll be, they'll be um, uh, vetting those uh, applications that are already in. They'll be reaching out to people for interviews and all that. And, and they'll be making offers to the best people before we even get out of the, the gate. And so um, you talked about having meetings later. This should be a special meeting within the next week or two to say, you know what? It's a possibility, and the county has done the searches. They, I'll tell you, it was private people way back then. Not a good way to go. The county offers a great service. They can also, if things aren't moving in a way where we know we're we're not getting the leftovers as our possible superintendent, which I don't think anybody would like to see here, um, which generally happens if you're late in the in the process. Um, the county can offer interim superintendents 
services. And we have done that twice in the past with great success um, uh, before Scott came and uh, also um, uh, before um, uh, Jim Brusher started, we used those services to get um, to be on an even keel and make a good firm choice and be ahead of things because this is a great district it's going to attract great candidates if they have the opportunity but also in this market people are going to be jumping at a job that looks good early on they're not going to hang, hang around so anyway I'm encouraging you to have a special meeting ASAP to come up with a plan to, to and and it would I fall to Pete to reach out to the county offices to get the information about, you know, what are the options and then weighing those options. And then Jim has a lot of experience in this and, you know, getting a, getting an idea of what would be the best course of action. Of course, it'll be up to you, but having never having done this before, I would suggest that this would be, you know, this is a decision we want to have last, you know, like Scott being here for five years and not have the general turnover, which is three years. Average tenure of a superintendent is three years. So when you have somebody stay five years, somebody else stays a year. So you want to make a good choice here. So thank you very much. Good job. Okay, our next speaker is Marley Mendez. Good evening, County School Board and Superintendent Smith. Um, after speaking with Dr. Brescia, it becomes clear that this board has the authority and we believe obligation to make an effort to rescind the raise and vote voted on for Superintendent Smith at the previous school board meeting. We are asking for this board to rescind their vote for the following reasons. One, an increase in pay is typically merit-based after a formal performance review and, there, and before a new contract is offered. The manner in which this raise was presented to both this school board and post school board was, was excuse me, sir, huge, circuitous. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Circuitous and personality Could you based. Speak up just a little bit? Sure. Thank you. Put your uh, mouth like, like it's an ice cream cone into the microphone. Yeah. So, personality based and not based on a formal performance review signed by board members. This rush process did not justify clearly to the public what the raise would entail if it was a one-time bonus or on-base salary and without all public disclosure of funding, questions and concerns answered, and public input heard and acknowledged before the vote occurred. The inability of board members to respond to community questions regarding this issue prior to the vote has created a lack of trust in the board. There was no reason the vote had to be rushed since Superintendent Smith's contract was not up until 2024. Unless, of course, the board was apprised in advance of the vote of Superintendent's plan to retire. The inappropriateness of the process is what we take exception with. The fact that this process was pushed to happen quickly by Trustee Castillo, Mr. Smith's longtime childhood friend and confidant, reeks of a conflict of interest lack of transparency, and appearing to be a grip. This final windfall should not have been tied to Superintendent Smith's base salary. Superintendent Smith should not be vested bonus uh, since he announced his retirement immediately after being granted the money, which is coincidentally ironic. This windfall raised uh, for Superintendent Smith an additional hundreds of thousands of dollars over a 20-year period. He would not be contributing into the retirement system at this level, nor will the state. This takes away from the harm and harms the integrity state funds in the retirement system and those who are contributing and for whom the state is also contributing, in particular, the teachers. For the sake of time, I would ask that all people please stand who want the vote for the salary raise for Superintendent Smith rescinded and for this base salary be rescinded to pre-windfall level. I would ask the board to record the number of people standing in support. Please stand.
21. Is that what you got? Okay. What was it? Oh, I said I was standing. 22. Oh, 21. Oh, 22. Okay. So 22. Thank you. Next speaker is Daniel Hewitt. So I just wanted to kind of follow up with uh, what Marlene said, because it was just kind of interesting how everything kind of got pushed through. Like, I've never had a contract, you know, get a raise before two years contracts due, and then having it come out when we had asked who initiated it, no one seemed to know until I read it in the Tribune that it was Castillo, and um, <clears throat> sorry, I could see how a buddy of 50 years, like, hey. Get you bumped before you go. Like that's what it seems like to me. I don't know, it might not be, but it seems real coincidental. So maybe check it out. Uh next person is Patty Wagner. Can you hear me? Okay. Um I think there's an issue that's come up with Mr. Castillo and his residence where he sleeps at night. Um, I know he was the uh, president of the uh, trustee on the Cayuca School Board, but I think the fact that he does not reside in Cayuca, he should have rec recused himself from being a trustee on the school board. And given the conflict of interest and lack of impartiality issue, he should have recused himself from instigating and bringing forth a raise for his friend, Superintendent Smith. Given the issue of residence, he falsely represented himself um, as the president trustee of the Cayuca School Board when pushing for a hefty raise for Superintendent Smith. All these are more reasons why Cayuca School Board should rescind their vote regarding the windfall raise for Superintendent Smith. Additionally, we call for the immediate uh, resignation. Unfortunately, Mr. Castillo is not here tonight, but we request his resignation from the Cayuca School Board. Thank you. Next speaker is Gretchen Ross. Hi. Um, I was the lead petitioner for when uh, the attempt was made to change our district clattering, uh, um, our Peter. Peter school district from um, Coast to Morro Bay. And in that effort, I spent hours and hours and hours reading minutes. I and so with this new superintendent hire, what you know, what a real quick takeaway is is when we have a superintendent that represents both districts, which Cayucas isn't really a true district. We are a component district of a unified district that it doesn't serve our interests. There are a lot of different issues that still have not been resolved back from the 70s from when we've had shared superintendents. I urge you to go back to the model where we have a principal superintendent. And I also urge the board to look into in the monies that are saved by having a joint um, principal superintendent to look into hiring a mental health professional. And I'm not talking about a school psychologist because their job is 504 plans and IEP. But we need someone to come in here and to help our children and our staff deal with all of what's been going on these past couple of years. And I think that is really in the best interest of our community and our students. Thank you.
Okay. Yeah. Susan Mathias. Dear President Schuler and trustees, on January 18, 2022, I filed a public records request under the California Public Records Act. I asked for wage and contract information for the superintendent, his executive assistant, and other management level employees at Cayuga School. I need this information so I can analyze the total cost of Cayuga's administration compared to other schools. I should not have had to file a public records request as this information should be already posted on the school's website. It's not like I'm asking to dig up ancient history. In other districts, similar information for these same positions is easily accessible, either on their district websites or on the county office of Ed's website. In short, it is information that any of us should have an easy time finding, but that's not the way it works here at Cayuca. At the last board meeting, Mr. Guile stated that Mr. Smith did not take a pay increase in 2019. Currently, I have no choice but to take his word for that, as the information doesn't appear. I can find what Mr. Smith earned at Coast Unified that year on Transparent California. No such luck with Cayuca. When I search the county's website for Cayuca salary, a system error appears. So much for transparency and honest disclosure. In response to my request, I got the email that I have included. In the email, Mr. Smith addressed me as Ms. DeLamas and goes on to quote legal precedent, which might make sense if I wasn't asking for something that is routinely provided by most districts and should already be on the website. Furthermore, how can the public be expected to contribute or even understand what's going on with the superintendent's salary, his contract, his assistant's salary, his assistant's contract, if you make it impossible for us to find the information? By shifting this away from being properly reported to making it a request for public information, you basically delay the public's ability to discuss it for 120 days, which means we're wasting our time. But by then, it is ancient history. I have recently found out that Mr. Smith plans to retire 120 days from February 30th, whatever that means. I hope he can find the time to fill my request before he leaves. By the way, the information I requested should have been easily accessible to the stakeholders before the vote board voted Mr. Smith an unwarranted pay raise. And last person for this uh, item, John Curdy. Good evening. My name is John Curdy. I'm a resident of Cayuca. President Shula and the members of the board. Only three, po only three parties, the Coast Unified Board, the Cayuca Elementary Board, and Superintendent Smith truly know what is going on with respect to the pay increase. According to recent press releases, or I should say press articles, it appears people don't either know, and caught in half-truths, or may have unwittingly voted for a raise under false pretenses. In essence, we've seen three articles, three different accounts, who, who is responsible for initiate, initiating the raise. But there can only be one true account. In any case, whichever version turns out to being the truth, such actions once again show the board's continued lack of transparency and its stakeholders who largely foot the bill by payment of their property taxes. So now we're left with Superintendent Smith giving his notice, 120 day notice. In my opinion, the board should not allow the shared services contract to continue and should ex and just expire on June 30th so that he can continue to perform work for Coast during the last 90 days prior to his retirement. When his notice of retirement becomes official, I strongly urge the board to immediately give Coast Unified the requisite 30 day notice to terminate the agreement. Upon giving notice and after the 30 day period has expired, Superintendent Smith reverts back to his contract with Cayucas for the remaining period of his employment. The reason I'm saying this is I believe it's imperative that Superintendent Smith and the board devote 100% of their time to getting and successfully completing a new superintendent search. Furthermore, to ensure that Superintendent Smith 
when he comes back to Cayucas, he's only doing Cayucas work, I would ask the board to consider pursuing legal alternatives in, in consult with district council to ensure that there's no contact between Mr. Smith and Cambria and Coast Union, Coast, Coast Unified, with respect to any uh, board, ma any matters for Cambria, and then you should be confined to focusing strictly on Cayucas. First and foremost, the board has a responsibility of the citizens of Cayucas. Not Mr. Smith, not Coast Unified, it's Cayucas. I believe the termination of the services contract, the shared services contract, is the way to get Mr. Smith focused on doing his job for Cayucas. Now, if the board doesn't want to go with that, and they want to keep the shared services contract going, then because I believe Mr. Smith may not be able to continue to provide 50% of his time to Cayucas, and it hurts Cayucas, we need to get additional compensation out of Coast. And we can do that because without his, with him serving as <coughs> superintendent for Cayucas and not Coast, they're the ones that are out of a, out of a superintendent. You gotta look out for Cayucas first. All right, we move on to approval of the minutes. Uh, we did have one speaker for that. Can you, say, can you say my name or do I just get up? Gary, <laughs> No, no, that, that, no, these were a different item. Two items. So Pete, at the beginning, you said I had to wait for you to oh, give you. me the three minutes. I don't ready? know if I'm. Hold on. He's on? Well, I'm waiting for him to tell me I can. That's what he ready? said. Ready. Mark, please. I spoke um, before the board numerous times about the minutes and how they needed to be have a little bit more substance. And I believe it was November at back that it was agreed to. And you guys have made great strides. However, there's still more work that needs to be done. Um, the current minutes in the very beginning, the call to order and open session. Um, for Erica Torres, it says read her correspondence attached. That's not appropriate. A correspondence is not attached to minutes. So minutes are, are basically a legal document of your meeting. So if somebody like Gretchen is later on doing research and pulls up the minutes from January 12th, they're going to go, wait a minute, where are these attached correspondence? So your board bylaws say that they need to have more information. So just to say see attached isn't really appropriate. Um, attention to detail. I don't know why there's a question mark between Pete Schuler and my name. That's just sloppy. You know, it just, and it says, I said superintendent contract, taking back control, satisfactory behavior, superintendent evaluation. I don't know what satisfactory behavior means because I in no way, shape or form said that Scott Smith was satisfactory. So that should be corrected. I mean, there, I don't know what that's implying, but I didn't say that. And I can guarantee you I did say that he was satisfactory. Um, later on in public input on session four, it's a, it's a start in the right direction. However, if you notice the people that were, have more words attached to there, were supporting Scott. First of all, I don't think minutes should say supporting Scott, supporting Scott. It should be Mr. Smith or Superintendent Smith. That is way too loud. It's way too uncomfortable. But if you look here, it'll say, um, for Jeff Held, it's a district superintendent. Well, what does that mean? Is he for the superintendent? Is he not for the superintendent? But then it goes on, Nicole Tamayo supporting Scott. Alicia Evans, living in the land of the free, home of the brave, supporting Scott. Emmerich McLeod, however you say her name, shows support for Scott. Renee Rapay, supporting Scott. So those who supported Scott had it stated in the minutes, but the other people didn't. That's not a balanced reporting of the minutes. Okay. Um, I would like the minutes to continue to be approved. Yes, you're writing names in there, and I appreciate that. But if you look at these minutes, they're very one-sided. They don't say what the person said. Again, I was here at the meeting when you, when you read Jeff Held, district superintendent. What does that mean? Was he supporting or not? Other people were written as supporting. Other people are not. So I would, I would request that you please continue to improve. You had started making an improvement, but it's a work in progress. Continue to improve your minutes because they are a lasting record of board meetings. And lastly, this isn't a minutes comment, but 
If you're only going to communicate with people via Parent Square about a change in venue for the meeting, I encourage you to do something else. I don't, I don't get that. I'm not a parent. I don't get Parent Square. I request minutes, at least at the minimum, email us. But those of us that aren't parents wouldn't have known that. Oh, on the minutes. On the okay. Minutes, so there's okay. a graph, there's a question mark on the first feature before closed session, and it should say Laverna Health. Okay. Um, Ralph, did we address that on the last one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we just check it? Is that okay? And then probably call off the street. Listed down below and see the receipt. Alright, there's a check. And we'll see if we can extract the one from that. Well, if you're going to make changes, why can't you add to what the other people said? I mean, you either do it all or none. Uh, all right, well, let's just go with this. Uh, do we have a movement to motion to, to approve the minutes as is and move on from, from the next month? Or move on with this month to make it better? Or should we do it for Make a motion to approve the two minutes as they are. I'll second that. Okay. Trustee Schuler? Aye. Trustee Brownell? Aye. Trustee Wright? Aye. And just an emphasis on improvement. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, do we have our speaker here? Daniel? Stand on the podium. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. he's coming. All right. Uh, just, all right. Do we have any takeaways? Or? No. Okay. Just like last meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, so our next next discussion topic is a public hearing about our um, trustee areas. This is our fourth one. So therefore, I think we're comfortable with, with the three of us voting for that. We can have everybody's here. Is that right? So Daniel, do you yeah, want to? I don't think we can do, it. Okay, do you want to sit here or do you want to talk? Yeah. Whatever it's up to you. You can come sit here. We need to have you on the microphone though, so people yeah. at home can hear you. Okay. Go around the door. Thank you, Daniel. So Daniel is here from um, Demographics Company. He's been helping us uh, set up possible ways to split Cayucas up into five trustee areas. Um, so those maps have been posted online. They were previewed at the last meeting. Um, they, they're still online and the board is looking to select a map tonight. Um, we're going to have a public hearing and then later in the agenda uh, there's an opportunity for the board to vote on a resolution. So Daniel, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Superintendent Smith, and uh, good to be with you, board members. Um, I'm Daniel Phillips, and I'm from National Demographics Corporation. And uh, tonight is the, the fourth uh, public hearing that is required by state law whenever a jurisdiction is moving from an at-large election system to a by trustee area election system. And so we, uh, we've had uh, two pre-draft hearings back in the summer. And now uh, we are in the last stage of the process where we have uh, hearings where we consider actual draft maps, as well as discuss the election sequence of whichever map is uh, selected. 
So um, they're all, uh, there's also scheduled to be an adoption hearing tonight at the same meeting where uh, one of the maps will be uh, adopted by resolution. So there are uh, three federal laws to be mindful of in this uh, process. One is to have uh, equal population by trustee area. Uh, the second is to not dilute the voting strength of any uh, racial or ethnic minority group uh, that would uh, adhere to the Federal Voting Rights Act. And uh, lastly, to not practice what is called racial gerrymandering, where you make race or ethnicity the only or main consideration. There are other uh, traditional principles that may be considered like respect for communities of interest, drawing areas that are compact, that are uh, contiguous, just one piece each, that follow uh, visible boundaries, uh, that respect uh, voters' choices, and uh, account for any planned future growth. So there have been three draft plans presented to the board. They are called the green, orange, and yellow plans. And each of these has been uh, posted on the district website, as well as on an interactive uh, review map. And the, uh, the main differences uh, between the, the plans are in uh, how the, the board is affected by each plan and uh, what effect that has on the election sequence. In the green plan, there are no pairings of incumbent board members. So each incumbent will have the opportunity to run for uh, re-election in his or her, her own uh, area if he or she wishes to do so, and that is uh, the uh, that is the case under the green plan. Under the orange plan, there would be uh, one area in which there are there is an uh, a pairing of incumbents, uh, Castillo and Guile, and that would be uh, in area two. Uh, but uh, the election sequence would remain the same because uh, both of those uh, trustees. Uh, their terms expire in the same year, and so that would uh, that area would be up for election in 2022, and uh, and there would be a vacant area one, which would also be up for election in 2022. Finally, there is the yellow plan, where you would have uh, two pairings of incumbents, and that would leave two vacant areas as well, and if uh, that plan were to be chosen, there would be uh, two possible election sequences to implement. We offer a proposed election sequence where areas one, two, and three are up in 2022, and areas four and five are up in 2024, but there is an alternative election sequence as well. So under all these plans, there is a total population deviation under 6%. And anything under 10% is considered equal population. So there, there is no, there is no issue with equal population. And uh, so it, it really comes down to what, uh, what plan board members in the public uh, seem to, seem to uh, approve of based on the effect on the board, as well as uh, what the areas look like as far as what neighborhoods are, are better preserved. And uh, so under the orange plan, the, the downtown area would be uh, preserved in area one, while under the green plan, it would be split between areas one and three. And uh, the downtown area would also be pretty well preserved in uh, area one under the yellow plan as well. So uh, I believe that's all that I have to present. So I'm happy to take any questions from the board. We'll move on to the public hearing. Uh, yep. Okay. So I have two two people we've already put in for it. So uh, John Curdy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll just I'll just speak up a little louder. A couple of questions for uh, for Daniel. Uh, under the orange plan with uh, members Castillo and Guile, uh, they both cannot be reelected, can they? Out of one district. No. Okay. So the uh, the second place finisher, second place finisher, is out. All right. If John, speak into the microphone. If if uh, uh, no one runs in area one, 
one will be, uh, a trustee will be appointed for that district. Is that correct? From that area. From that area. That was my question. It has to be from that area. Okay. My only other comment, and not directed at Daniel, but it just seems like this is a solution in, ter in search of a problem. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to divide up the town into five districts, 500 people roughly. Uh, you're going to have situations where possibly 150 or 200 people are going to determine who gets elected. And then, you're, you know, depending on when, what plan you pick, you might you're not get a chance to vote for anybody for a couple of three years. It, it, it just seems unfortunate that we have to go to this kind of a method. I think it was better, no, no disrespect to him, and anything else, it just needs, I, I think really the best one, in keeping with what we've done in the past, is just to go with the green plan. Everybody gets a chance to defend themselves, and uh, you know, you just keep with that three and two, three and two, without all this back and forth with some of these others. I don't really have a problem with uh, any of the uh, divisions, uh, but I just think that the green plan probably makes more sense in terms of continuity to the town. Thank you. Um, I just need to go to the town. Yeah, especially this one. Uh, Ron, you want to talk about this one? <laughs> Why not? I didn't turn in a card because okay. I didn't have to. It, it, you do. Am I on the clock? You're not for a public um, hearing, no, usually. No, no. This, is, this, is, this is public hearing, uh, so, so we, 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 we want it. a school board president, if he wants to have any other questions, if you want to we'll just ask him. Yeah, yeah. 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 a public hearing is a back and forth. Thank you, that's fine. Okay, you speak up on everyone. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, uh, I just want to uh, comment when you guys get to a vote on the actual plan. I want to point out that uh, it appears that you're going to go into closed session in a few minutes after this. Is that what I'm reading there? A closed public hearing? Is that that's what ha is happening? 6-2? Uh, what does that mean? Is this a public hearing? So Trustee Schuler on 6.2 will close. Well, there's an opening and closing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Thank you. That's, I, that's, I, I just wanted to make sure we okay. weren't having yeah. discussions about yeah. the plan yeah. oh, right. outside, outside of the public. So I, I apologize. No problem. We have time left. That's unusual. Okay. Um, we have. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, well, I asked specifically at the beginning oh. if I needed to turn in a, a card okay, for this, fine, and I was fine. told I didn't. Yeah. Okay. This is open public hearing. Uh, I'm Carrie Friend. I spoke at the last meeting as well. I respectfully disagree with Purdy about um, the green plan keeping continuity with uh, Cayuca. I don't like the yellow plan. I'm more in favor of the orange plan. Um, Daniel, I'm kind of curious because last last month I also went to the coast meeting and you blew these all up and had them on the board. It was a two hour discussion with three, four people. How come we don't have that opportunity here? What's that? There's no screen, but if you want to see them. Well, no, but you had it for everybody to see. Like I, I spoke last time about this green plan. What I don't like is area one has that finger into the numbered street. So if you're walking from the beach, you're going to be in area two, walk down the street halfway, get to area one, continue on to your neighbors and get area two. So when I brought that up last month, Susan Brownell came over to me and said, oh, there's a sliver over here too. Well, if we could see that in the big map like you did for Coast, I just feel like we're getting a not equal experience because you were able to put that up there and see, and if Susan could see that, it's of that finger of number one in the green plan is completely different than the orange plan because that finger in the green plan is in the middle of a district. In the orange plan, it's just on the edge of a district. So I'm not going to walk down my street. Hey, neighbor, you're in one. Oops, you're in two. Oops, now I'm back to one. That's what I don't like. And if it's just to 
if it's just to preserve the trustees, I don't care about that. You know, to have that little finger in there for the sole reason of allowing trustees to not um, have any pairing, I think is a poor decision because you know, I was in the trust. I was there for eight years. Ron was there for history. We're not there anymore. Okay, so to base decisions on where people live, I think is inappropriate because they're not going to be here forever. So I think that the green plan is a poor choice, and um, I'm extremely disappointed in this board and the fact that if you had gone up to Coast and seen what a beautiful presentation he did, we're getting jits of that same thing here. He blew it up on a screen. Whether you guys want to meet indoors or outdoors, I don't really care. You can put up a screen. He had his computer hooked up. It was a two-hour discussion of the different maps and blowing in and out. And if we could blow in and see that, it'd be a lot easier than my 53-year-old eyes looking at this and trying to see it and talking to everybody else trying to see that. I just think it's a disservice. Uh, you okay to close public hearing on that? that I have no opinion on the okay. yellow okay. or the orange plan, but in looking at the green plan, it seems very short sighted to me. Once you vote on these district lines, it, 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 I assume that this is how it's going to be for a very long time because changing anything is 10 years. Ten years. So, yeah, so, okay, so we've got this for 10 years, and who knows, we don't even know what the next four years are going to look like with the board. And to make a decision based on who is sitting where, sitting up here, and where they live is very short sighted, and it's not in the best interest of our community. I just want to say one thing. I don't think any of this is in the best interest of this community at all. I think this is gonna hurt this community for the next 10 years, no matter what color we pick. So, so. This was meant for a much larger district. Oh, I'm not I'm not arguing with that. I'm not, I'm not arguing, arguing directly with that to you. Either. I'm commenting to the public. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So we'll close that. Okay, so we will move on to presentations. Uh, Associated student body. We have quite a few things going on at school. We're ramping up to some fun things on this by Friday. After the Valentine's Day, we have a uh, President's Day. Also, on Friday is kind of say where a. Can we just can we can this stop for a second while this other talking is going on? It's kind of distracting. Well, do do the trustees have other questions for Daniel, or can we release him to the? Are you going to have questions for any resolution part of the map? <laughs> Or I thought we were voting trustees. tonight. You are voting yeah. tonight, but before you vote, are you going to want to ask some more questions? Could I ask you to stay? Um, um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have any Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I was waiting until so 10 too. Okay. To make, my other point and with Daniel being here because I just, you know, I didn't, I just assumed he would be here. All right. Yeah. Well, in, in light of that, if you had, you, if you had, you're waiting for 10 to, uh, uh, okay. we, 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 we haven't gotten too far into the presentation. What's the public hearing for? Okay. So let's, we're going to go back to six, six one. Uh, this can you hold for a second on this? <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. You ready? Okay. Am I doing right. no, okay. Are we skipping around? Are we going to 10 2 now? No, no, I just was going to wait till 10 2, but since Daniel was going to leave, and I think, I think it's important to address him in part. Um, and with all due respect, Daniel, the first thing we said was was the Green keeps these, um, these current uh, board members, all the incumbents, with their own areas. 
and uh, John had a different opinion than I did. If that isn't even a consideration, you know, if, if what we're picking or you're picking is 10 years of representation for these different parts of the community. And Susan, it's by law. It doesn't make I any know. sense. But, I, know. Yeah. I wanted to make but, my comment, yeah. Ron. Yeah. No, 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 I was just agreeing with I, you. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. But, but it's, again, it's not at all a valid reason. And if you mention it as the first thing, it tells me that this whole thing is skewed. You know, if you if the first thing you bring up, hey, this is the great one to choose because it's everybody gets to keep their seat and not run against each other. You know, it, it, that's not even a consideration. And it brought up first uh, is disturbing. And as it comes to the maps, again, the um, the, um, the main thing I see is that it's it's called gerrymandering when you have one part of a community of a map extend into part of a community it's it's like it borders two streets and it goes right down the middle so anyway i, I so i that's my comment on the map but on the general process you know that it that it seems to be keyed on there's a whole map here that's just based on that uh is wrong I don't know if Daniel is able to answer a question or provide an um, opinion. In, in your opinion, what map does it seem to keep the town and the neighborhoods most together? So I don't know Kaikis as well as all of you do. I, I did try to uh, base my map drawing based on um, general plan, land use, uh, zoning, etc. and I, I, I would say that the the orange plan does a better job keeping the uh, the downtown commercial area intact, and uh, I would say under the the yellow plan you get uh, you get more of that neighborhood in the southeast uh, together, and uh, the nature of of this is there's trade offs with with each, but uh, I would I would say that. You, you probably have uh, more neighborhood in, uh, integrity with uh, you know, either the orange or, or perhaps the yellow plan. I appreciate that. You know, looking at those maps, and I, I do agree with Carrie, it would be helpful if we were able to see them up larger, but it does seem like orange or yellow keeps the neighborhoods together the most and would just divide the town up the best. And I don't have too much of a preference between those two, but I think orange seems to be the best plan for that purpose. Ready to close uh, section 6.2 again? I have, I have one thing to say. Okay. Um, you mentioned one concern of, of where the trustees are. But there are 15 categories which we have to look at to see where the most equal presentation is. And I, I agree. This is not a district to do this. We're being forced to do it. If we were in San Luis Coastal, we would have Morro Bay, we would have Avila, we would have Los Osos, we would have San Luis Obispo with, with two distinct different, different sections. We don't have that. And it isn't really based on personality as much as it is based on the, the 15 categories that each section creates and that's what you really should be looking at so rather than worry about which trustee is going to be in what district i think worry about which students are in these categories and which families are in those categories what they speak what their income level is what their their uh, whether they even have children those are the people that are going to vote, not just what trustee is there. That comes at a different time when you get to vote for a trustee of your choice. Well, this, I, 
just want to add my little thing here. I just, you know, uh, just look at, looking at where, where we've been the last two election cycles, and I'd like to see everybody out here, and I'm glad you guys are all involved. But when I was elected, I was one of three and four candidates for three spots. Um, and Val and Susan just ran unopposed. So uh, it's going to be, uh, I like the uh, community involvement we have. I'm glad you guys are here. But I uh, also think about being part of something here. There's, because we have, if there's going to be people appointed here instead of people running, it's going to make a difference. So. Uh, we'll close that area. Liz, you ready? <laughs> All right. Let's talk about this. This is what we're here for. Oh. What are we doing? Negotiate Susan Bach, please. Um. So Friday we do have a our kindness day. We're wearing pink, red, white. Um, some things that are coming up Friday we have or Friday the 18th where we have Flag Day. Thank you to Mr. Adrian Hurtado. Um, the White Hat Band will be back um, this year, so that's fun. The fifth graders have a small performance. Um, then we have February 22nd, 22, which is Who's Day. And it's a where tiaras, tiaras ties tutus and two different tennis shoes. It's also a buddy day for the kids. And at lunchtime, we're going to have some three-legged races with their friends. So it's all about two, two, two. Um, our basketball teams, we have boys A and B and girls A and B teams. They continue to play today. They played um, Shandon here last week. They had three games. Um, game tomorrow is postponed. So there's another three games next week. So come and join us. Usually they start at um, 3.45, the girls, and then the, um, every hour after that. Um, the end of our second trimester is already coming up. We're um, very beginning of March. Which is just great. Um, some things, other things that are going on in campus. We have some fundraising and community outreach. Mrs. Tomac. Uh, Ms. Tomac and her design class completed the um, children's clothing drive about a week and a half ago, and they're doing, making donations to some local families um, in need. And right now we have Mrs. Dallas and the ASD are working on a project benefiting um, Heart, the animal rescue um, group in Cambria. So there's we have some sites that people can order things from and or donate money for them to purchase whatever they need for the, for the animals. And that's um, through the end of this week. Um, kind of a funny thing, the first graders are doing a time capsule because as first graders, they are in first graders and have gone through February 2nd of 22, which is two twos, obviously, we've got a lot of twos. But when they're seniors in high school, they will go through March 3rd, 2032. So three, two, three, three. So they're building a, um, they're doing some um, time capsules and putting some things in that they can then have when they're when they're seniors. It's kind of fun. Um, we've had some field trips going. Fourth grade is our, they're our field trip masters right now, um, testing the waters. They went to Cal Poly um, last week and they went to a learning, learn by doing lab um, over there and also got to see the brand new big boat that they have, which is five days away. Um, third grade went down to the beach here, and one of our assistants gave them a lesson on Chuma and the Chuma Indian. The first graders had the water company, storm water pollution prevention program come to campus and, and talk about water pollution and how it gets bad, and, and so we don't have a water school here. Um, so there's a lot of things um, going on on campus in the different classes and also the regional classes. And I think I could do the next one. Yep. <laughs> um, so PTA, they are fabulous. They um, were handing out money left and right yesterday. But a couple of things they talked about for the community, um, Oceanfront Pizza is having a fundraiser. We'll send out some more information. But if you mention um, Cayucas PTA, they donate 20% of the proceeds to the school. So we did have done one already, and they, I think she said that it was $275 to PTA, so that will be in about a month or so. Um, 
a little bit that we know. And they continue with the popcorn spirit days. They're having a little problem with the popcorn popper, but um, working on that. Um, the kids really like it. As with the seagulls and the rare birds, they're going to fly. But, um, but it is really fun. And they're talking about a PTA conference that some of them would like to go to down south and different programs that they can promote as a PTA as well. Um, they are having a clothing exchange April 30th from 10 to 2 here on campus. That's a Saturday. And so you can donate a bag of gently used new clothes that you want to share with somebody else. And you can bring them here. They're going to be on the tables by size, by gender, by types, whether it's shoes or t-shirts or shirts. And you get to swap. So it's basically a clothing swap, which is I think it'll be really fun. Mrs. Armstrong is in charge of that. Is she here? Amy? She's not here. She's not here. She's not here. Okay. So but she's in charge of that and kind of plan the it would be a fun date and the community will be involved and, and anybody that wants to come in grab some clothing and then they're gonna donate whatever they want as well. Um so the funding they worked on yesterday was um, our music department some guitars, some hand hand drums. They're smaller. Um, most of you know we used to have these gigantic um, metal drum hands that were often your teacher who moved um, up to Washington. Those were his. So Mrs. Williams found some hand hands that sound, sound almost identical to some of the teachers used to have. So um, they are helping to purchase some of those and then some other additional hand drums and percussion instruments that she helped with. Um, they also donated money for two foldable tables, some bulk cards with lock, and of course the needed pom poms because we have a spirit section now, complete with music and pom poms. Not necessarily for the cheerleaders, but um, we do have the cheering section for cheerleaders and a lot of pom poms out and happy to have the, the sound box. We need some pom poms because the other one is a shed. And that's just really special that they were able to get. Also, some soccer goals that we need to stand up to the way we do And we have a group here coming again. We love doing this because it's all about the group. So, thank you, PTA. They are a huge supporter of teachers' classrooms. Um, students, we have some field trips, the big one that seniors have just you know, they can catch up for them. They want to pay for those and get them out and about a little bit more. Um, and the help and self safety. Yeah, NASA couldn't come, so she did type up a, a little blurb about the health and safety group. Um, the update, um, thankfully, I'm just going to read her from what she said here. Thankfully, we've mirrored the state and county and are experiencing a steep drop in COVID-19 cases. Cases has had 66 cases reported to the school from students and staff, 48 of which have occurred since returning from winter break. Um, the countywide workshop that was scheduled for the middle of March has been canceled, and the safety group would like to do um, something as a committee in the spring to, in place of that. It's always a really nice um, sharing sharing time and with other communities, but um, it would be nice to have some kind of a collaboration, kind of a, a team building event with this, just for the group. Um, any staff that might be required to wear N95 masks for their job, they were fit tested today um, to keep the school, school in compliance with the Cal OSHA regulations. And we have a lot of N95 and KN95 masks for students and staff that have been provided for voluntary use. We have covered that. Oh, hand sanitizer. Um, the level of masks and the protection that they offer was discussed with staff at the last all staff meeting on February 2nd. The state and county mask mandates are going to be lifted next week. You probably heard that on, on the news. Um, schools, schools will still require masking until the K 8 12 guidance changes. And it looks like. Um, we added something in notes. It looks like the mask wearing in schools will be discussed on Monday at the state level, but the county didn't give any dates as of yesterday, and they didn't discuss it. 
change in any mass going to school. Um, safety group would like to purchase a shed by our low, lower gardens here um, to store some items that are causing some tripping hazards. And they want it placed next to the cafe garden that we have. Um, they'll use district safety match funds with approval from us and um, cost will be about $4,000. And also a wellness committee update, Becky Musso, who's our new cafe lead person, has taken over the wellness committee and they had their first meeting of the year on June 22nd. Okay. We had one, one request, seems like 73, which is uh, Susan Jack. President Schuler and trustees. Cayuga School District is very fortunate to have Nessa Garcia as our school nurse. She's dedicated to the health of the staff and children of the school and has been working diligently during this pandemic to keep everyone safe. Part of her job is to provide information, help the school comply with the law, and offer support and guidance to families to help them meet the public health orders to keep their children safe. I'm sure that has been incredibly difficult and draining and the district's leader seems to be disengaged and is disruptive of her efforts. I would like to thank her for the link she provided parents on Parent Square recently, as we all could use a bit more access to fact-based discussions regarding COVID. This webinar featured three highly respected local physicians, including a prominent pediatrician and questions from the community at large. As this board is so willing, even eager, to hand out pay raises and bonuses, I think Nessa should not be overlooked. She's fighting an uphill battle every day she comes to work. I urge board members themselves to talk with Nessa and see how she can be aided in her job at this very stressful time. Remember, she is now the only person at Cayuga School with a background in health, making her the only qualified individual to make and implement health-based decisions. She should be respected and listened to. Mr. Wright, you'll recognize her as the person you saw leading the yoga class when you did. Keep up the great work, Ness. Okay, uh, we'll move on to six and eight. Board member reports. Uh, I know you guys are still quite sick, right? Yeah? That's a joke. That's a bad joke. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> no. I'm smiling. <laughs> Sure, so everyone seems to be so curious, so um, I just want to answer some of the questions. Um, first off, regarding um, trustees and their residents, the law is very clear on trustees and residents. It is where you are registered to vote at an address, period. All right, well, I didn't interrupt you during your talk. Um, so that's that. As far as... Okay, um, let's, let's, let him have his report, please. As far as um, what's going on with my employment, um, you know, it's no secret that I bought a retirement home. Everybody knew. Well, you guys may not have, but all the board members knew. I bought a retirement home at the beginning of the school year. Everyone knew I was looking at retirement. So the two board presidents got together and thought they might be able to do some employee retention and keep me around a year or two more because it saves both districts so much money. That's it. I got an offer. I decided that I'm not taking it here. And Marlene's right about one thing. It would pad my retirement if I took the offer and stayed around a couple more years. But right now it does very little. And it will cost this district approximately $4,500 this year. So, okay. That's the big, huge, giant raise, hundreds of thousands of dollars, supposedly. 
not true. As far as um, my time here, it's been five and a half years of serving students and parents. Sometimes parents have really loved how I served their students. Sometimes not too happy. Um, one time I remember a parent storming my office telling me how I needed to move their son up in reading group. Shouldn't be in that remedial reading group. So I went to the teacher, I met with the teacher, I discussed what was going on, looked at the data, looked at the reading group, looked at the program, re-met with the parents, and told them, no, we just need to encourage your child to work hard in that reading group. They're in the right spot. And they'll be able to graduate out of that reading group and move up. And sure enough, within two months, that student graduated out of that reading group and moved up. Those parents have refused to talk to me ever since that day. So unfortunately, occasionally, I have to make decisions that I believe are in the best interest of kids that people don't like. Okay, it comes with the turf. I was warned by multiple people not to take this job because of the Cayucas cancel culture. <laughs> um, you know what I mean. So anyway, um, I would just say that um, I'm proud of the work that I've done. Uh, it hurts my heart a little bit that some of you are so disappointed in me. However, I would like to say that um, I'm going to be going away with no hard feelings in my heart, and I forgive everyone who knows how you treated me. And may God bless you, and God bless your children. Yeah, it's just a public disclosure. Um, we're getting ready to start bargaining with the CTA union, and we look forward to that. And hopefully, be able to make sure that uh, there's a closed contract for whoever's going to be the new superintendent. So um, there's no rush for them coming in. Work with the teacher stakeholders and um, be able to set those districts up for a smooth transition. So I'm looking forward to meeting with Tom and his team. All right, give me set agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Trustee Wright? Aye. Trustee Shore? Aye. Trustee Barnell? Aye. Uh, do we have any objection? I have some objections. Uh, do we have any donations to approve them? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that moves on to our resolution of 2022. Uh, proposal by trust the uh, adoption of the new trustee area. You guys ready for that? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how do we want to do this? Do you want to go to go? Okay. Well, I, I will. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to get, you want to get old, I want green and you want orange. We're not going very far. No. <laughs> and we have to have you because we only have three of us. We, we need all three. We, we have to have two and eight. Well, no, but it has to be three, 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 three and five. Well, I looked at I looked at the uh, category pretty 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 carefully. Um, the difficulty I have is with. Oh, I'm sorry. My fault. 
I looked at the categories really carefully and, and I didn't see a lot of difference with the exception of um, where lower income families were within the um, within the, the districts and so I, I'm going to support the green plan because of that um, I, I think it gave a little bit more opportunity for those families that uh, had uh, more of a difficulty with income I'm going to support the green uh, I personally got kind of torn between the green and the orange. Um, but uh, we just as moving forward, I, I will uh, support the green. So we can have, have that as a clean sweep. I didn't notice your mother. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I, <laughs> I thought that was funny. Well, it was not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay, so uh, moving forward, moving forward we are voting for the green Sorry. plan at this time. Yes. We need a motion. I will I'll make a motion to approve the green plan. We'll get the microphone going. I'll second. I'll make a motion to approve the green plan. I'll second it again. Trustee Schuler. Aye. Trustee Rano. Aye. Trustee Wright. Aye. Green plan. Okay, um, the review of the calendar. Yes. Um, Liz, Liz worked with the staff um, to go through the calendar and so we need to close it going forward. And so the staff's already looked at it and it lines up pretty well with San Luis Coastal except for the spring break. There's a little bit of an issue because San Luis Coastal is really on kind of a strange spring break next year. And so while we tried to align it up for families, um, that would be, I think, the one issue that people would want pointed out. Does Karen see that there's a comment on this? We've talked to several parents. You do? But, I mean, technically we're called to um, consult with the union and then it's completely up to the board to adopt it. So do we make a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the 2222 calendar. I'll second. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Wright. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. Yeah. Data ballot for the PSEO. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's, um, I think it's Mark Buckman has been um, serving on this as the delegate for this area, and he's the only person interested, so I would recommend to the board that you vote to approve him. I'll make a motion we approve. Mark I'll second Buckman. it. Trustee Brownell? Aye. Trustee Wright? Aye. Okay, uh, next one approval of our current board policies and board bylaws and projected change memo. It's all standard CSPA updates that we want. Those board policies. You do have the opportunity to waive the second reading and approve it tonight, or it has to be dropped. Okay. And then just like I said, it's the same process for the other two. Huh? For the other two board members, in case they have. Do you just want to do a first reading and bring it yeah, back? Yeah, we'll, we'll do a first reading and back and send it to the other. We go into closed session. Yep. Uh, we will report back out after our next session, but uh, yeah, there won't be any actions. There won't be any actions taken during that meeting. Okay.
Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you. You're still here. <laughs> you come back. <laughs> it's a beautiful night. That's why we kind of like having tonight. I, I'm sorry. Thank you all for dealing with the late change. That was my idea. It's just too beautiful a day. I thought uh, we just had a little bit easier time than we did last night. So thank you for joining us, audience.